ACAST powers the world's best podcasts. Here's a show that we recommend. What would you say if I told you there's a book that can teach you how to win The Bachelor? What would you say if I told you producers caught multiple finalists reading that book in this season that's currently airing? What would you say if I told you the producers don't want anyone to know that their show has been compromised? How do we know all this? We wrote that book. I'm Lizzie Pace. And I'm Chad Colchin. We're the authors of How to Win the Bachelor and the hosts of the Game of Roses podcast, a bi-weekly podcast where we break down all the biggest plays, errors, and MVPs in the game of reality television. Listen to Game of Roses wherever you get your podcasts and go to howtowinthebachelor.com to get our book. Acast helps creators launch, grow, and monetize their podcasts everywhere. Acast.com. Hi, it's Dave here. This is my wife, Kathy. Hello. This is the Cinemile. It's the podcast where we walk home from the movies. Or at least we used to, but now we, whatever movies don't happen in cinemas. And now we can't get to them. And then we wait several months until they come out on our TVs. And then we finally catch up on them, which is what's happened today. We're so excited because this movie, St. Maud, was on everyone's um, best films of the year list last year. But did it have a cinematic release? If it did, Oh, it did. We I missed believe it. we just couldn't literally we could not we go to a cinema it. they weren't open and then it wasn't oh, like film critics all got like screeners of it but we didn't have screener we were just like we have to wait for it to come on demand um, I mean we probably could have if we really tried to get a screener did but we didn't and then we've just rent, uh, we've just rented it and we're gonna watch it now and we're like I hope our expectations aren't too high because it's so well received and it was in all these lists of people that we respect last year uh, so I hope it's good I'm, I'm just excited to watch it Because it's 80 minutes long Yeah that's incredible I mean come on guys Make more 80 minute long movies 80 minutes is the new 90 minutes Apparently it's Even a horror, 90 minutes though. is too long Yeah But apparently it's a horror And <clears throat> I'm not a horror person But I'm willing to put that aside For a movie that's as well received You, you get on well with horror though Whenever you do watch it I'd, But I I'd think say. it's though Because I'll only watch the really good ones That like have been hugely recommended Whereas like you just watch any old horror I'll watch so it. So you watch it. bad do, ones. Do you remember when we went to see Hereditary? That was awesome. That was awesome. Yeah, in I think I'm, I'm I'm hoping for something in that vein. Ah, uh, yeah. Sort of weird, I'm just twisty, fascinated. psychological. And I've not even seen a trailer. I know I know nothing about it. I basically except that Mark Hamill loved it. So that's yeah. cool. I'm into it. There's religious vibes, I believe. That's Ooh, okay. Yeah. Well, it's called Saint Maud, so one would infer that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'll give it away. All uh, uh, right, I don't know what else to say. Let's uh, go watch we'll, it. Let's go watch it. We'll uh, see you guys back here shortly. In 80 minutes. Bye. You must be the loneliest girl I've ever seen. I just want to see you loosen up. I've got more important things on my mind. Maud, he isn't real. This is life and death on another level. Oh, yes, of course. Never waste your pain. Never waste your pain. Hi, we're back. We saw St. Maud. 80 minutes have passed. <laughs> I love it. I can't get over that. Um, but before we, uh, we chat about it, I uh, just wanted to give a quick uh, shout out and thank you to uh, some of the people who have joined our Cinemile High Club over at patreon.com forward slash the Cinemile. So big thank you to Davey Gilgannon, Kilgannon, sorry, uh, to Gillian Dunn, to Ryan Neal, to Jill Flanagan Hi Jill Hi Jill uh, Former guest on the pod And to Daniel Crowley um, Thank you guys for subscribing uh, At the rate of two or three pounds a month And getting access to um, Like what more than 20 plus Old movie reviews there now Loads of TV shows We just watched Singing in the Rain uh, And if you want to join The illustrious ranks Head over to patreon.com Forward slash The Cinemile uh, And guys. get access to all those things And vote on what you want us to watch next and now let's talk about that awesome movie that we just watched. Yeah, that was amazing. <laughs> that was really, really good. If it's your good. first time here at uh, at the cinema, um, we won't spoil anything just yet. So we'll just give you our sort of thoughts on what we what, what we just watched. Then we'll go into then we got spoiler street. details on Spoiler Street spoiler later. Spoiler Street used to be near our local cinema. Now it's near our house. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, when you're it's on kind your of in your mind. State sanctioned walk around the block. Like this movie. <laughs> yeah. Um I loved this movie. It really surprised me. Uh I couldn't I thought I knew where it was going, I didn't know where it was going. It was so fresh, it was so original. Uh loved, Yeah, I've never seen like, anything like I that. I loved the story. I thought the actresses were brilliant. Do you I get- love that it's like an all female cast written and directed by a woman. Um and like in brief, like it's about a young nurse called Maud who is a caring kind of end of life carer for a woman who's suffering from pa- cancer. Palliative, I think it's palliative called. care yeah. and it's a, is that setting. Um but Maud is very religious and uh shit gets a bit weird. <laughs> and um yeah, I, ne- I honestly, yeah, I never. I think it, that's good. It kept going in places I didn't expect it to go. I thought it was like wonderfully shot. Like parts of the movie were really beautiful, and parts of it were like really grubby, and parts of it were really spooky. And for people who aren't into big horror-y, hugely scary movies, like I'm not, I would say it's actually not that scary. It's creepy. It's, it's almost more of a thriller. And disturbing. I would say it's very disturbing. It's distur- It's like to me, it was like a thriller with some horror touches of horror uh, so yeah anyway rave review for me absolutely love it really glad we watched it um, yeah I was yeah, completely swept up in it it's amazing it's 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 a uh, it, uh, can you believe I just read up on um, the, after the credits rolled uh, writer director Rose Glass it's her first ever feature debut it's incredible I was watching it and I was like because I didn't know her name it's her first we ever feature saying, debut it'll be her it only feature, feature debut. debut sorry it but is we her were saying, I was like this is a really accomplished <laughs> director like it has to be like yeah. this is so controlled she's 31 that's incredible she's 5 years younger than she was born in 1990 <laughs> she wasn't even born in the 80s man it's absolutely just making me reassess my life <laughs> the accomplishment of, of this woman it's, it's, it's incredible it, it's an amazing thing to have what a debut produced um, she did it with the, the backing of um, film 4 uh, she's made a load of shorts and, and just like she's just going to be in a, like an amazing can you imagine all it's like um, talent remember when Phoebe Waller-Bridge came off the back of Fleabag and like Amazon paid her like millions and millions and millions of dollars oh, she's I gonna, feel like she's, Rose Glass is going to be like very hot property now but interestingly when I watched that documentary last year the Gina Davis one called This Changes Everything and they talked about like how continuously in Hollywood like female directors um, and writers and like female led movies like that time and time again something like Thelma Louise will come along and they'll say this changes everything we're going to have more female focused stories um, or you'll have a female director do like a really big movie and everyone's like oh this is amazing she's going to be the next big director and then it's like nothing ever comes of it Yeah. so I really hope that that's not the case with this movie and that she gets in a brilliant deal and just keeps making movies because she's like I'd watch anything she made now I'd love to go and watch her shorts but anyway back but, to the but movie on, but on that, sorry, on on that subject because um, I, I read a, an, um, an, uh, an article on Medium by Film 4 about her and, and an interview with her and that kind of comes up about this is her first press tour um, off the back of this film because it got US distribution as well and played at the Tor- Toronto Film Festival like A24 are distributing it and she said that one of the common things that keeps coming up is the fact that she's a female director it's a, it's a talking it's point it's a talking point because it's she, genuinely unusual but that's the thing it is on it, but she she's saying like I'd rather like that to me that's not interesting I'd rather just talk about how the work that's her point exactly, and it's yeah. kind of like a bit of too, it's too much pressure like you say to just put on somebody this changes everything exactly it's like, it's like no things need to change but it shouldn't be on rose glass to change everything and things are changing and it's not on her it's just you have to point it out because it is unusual but yes so tell us what you thought of the movie I loved it I thought it was uh, it's it's gets under your skin like as you said uh, it's grotty and grubby like the way like I've never um, she's just got an eye for uh, it's like for for, I don't know how she did it whether this is like just the um, uh, the way things are shot or the locations or the little details but like it, everything in this movie like and I mean like tables and glasses <laughs> and like everything looked slimy and dirty yeah and there's a scene I won't spoil anything there's a scene like in a pub at one stage and it's just the grubbiest pub I've ever seen and I, and you could have <laughs> probably was. you could shoot that this is the like this is the power of like visual storytelling you could probably shoot that same location if I was directing a Heineken ad because she was drinking she's drinking like a big old pint of Heineken or something and I'd be like I could make that pint look 
bloody delicious. <laughs> but no, that's the most dis- disgusting pint I've ever seen. And lately, and like, when we watch anything right on TV that someone's in a restaurant or a pub, like we're like, oh my god, oh yeah, I'd I love to, go to be to there. A pub, I want to go to a pub so much. And tonight, I was like, nah, I don't want to go to yeah, that. Pub. This town, wherever it is, <laughs> it's like it, it's portrayed as, and and it's also it's a beachside town. That's the thing. And but it's what's like interesting, a beachside town in the winter, though. That's the thing. Yeah. It's like this location. I don't know where they shot it, but wherever it is, I bet it is a nice tourist destination. <laughs> and that's what's interesting about this film, because this is entirely centred around one character's perspective. And you're seeing this everything through their eyes. So that's what I mean by like what's interesting is we're being presented with um, a vision that's literally Maud's perspective on the world so like <laughs> which you, ain't a pretty one because <laughs> if you were another character in this movie and walked down that beach there's even a few moments where you see um, the character uh, the other character Amanda like out for a walk and, and looking out over the horizon and, and you get glimpses of like what life is about <laughs> yeah anyway we'll save some of that for, yeah, for spoilers I think but we I should think go to spoilers streets pretty quickly because there's a lot to unpick it's exciting I'm exci- I was, I'm, I'm feeling excited about this movie I'd love to watch it again it's so easy to consume as well yeah <laughs> uh, there's there's also less, oh yeah anyway, let's go let's go to spo- I cannot recommend this enough um, everyone is right that this is worthy of your time it's um, it's a, like it's a cliche to say it's a calling card for this person rose glass but it really is like but it's I mean, also this a is product just... in itself it's not just like oh here's a promising filmmaker it's like here's oh, a yeah. brilliant no, film no this is like if somebody this if this was something that somebody produced after 30 years of filmmaking you'd be like they've just hit the, hit on their that's masterpiece that's what I mean I was like it's so yeah. cool. I felt like when I was watching the film that like every part of it was like so deliberate and so beautifully shot and and uh really unique way of looking at this young woman that was like really cool now let's go to Spoiler Street right spoilers for St. Maud turn off if you haven't seen it go away it only takes 80 minutes yeah. and you won't find it you won't guess the plot so like don't listen to the plot right if you haven't seen it yeah. so you've had your warning take your headphones out <laughs> right. <laughs> right Spoiler Street <laughs> we are here um. Finding high quality mental health care can be daunting and exhausting. That's why Cerebral offers convenient access to online mental health services, including therapy and medication management. Cerebral's diverse clinician team can help with anxiety, depression, insomnia, stress, grief, big life changes, and more. You can schedule and communicate with your care team through Cerebral's mobile app and attend your sessions from the comfort of your own home. Get started with or without insurance. Plus, you can now use FSA or HSA. Start your first month for 50% off at Cerebral.com slash ACAST. I think there's a bit in the middle which you, which you were referring to earlier where you don't quite you, you, this movie goes places you didn't expect we it. thought the whole movie was like going to be set in this very cool uh, singular like house yeah, location claustrophobic house yeah. and they set up they set it all up you're like right it's these two women in a house that's the movie and, at the, and when and she arrives she says to the other nurse uh, what's she like the patient and the other nurse says she's a bit of a cunt so we're like yeah. okay yeah. That, that old we think it's going to be this old baddie woman like we think Maud's our protagonist like we're rooting for Maud in this scenario and then after a while I was like to Dave I, I think Maud's the villain because yeah. that other Excuse woman me, seems quite nice you. but I said I think she's possessed or something yeah 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 but but it's, but now I'm, I'm like I don't know I actually I don't think Maud was possessed I think it was all in, all her, in head. her head for sure but what's cool about this movie is it could be either and yeah, you, but it you really get, could be either. She it, could be possessed or she could be like yeah, it, very yeah, um, it could unhinged. Be. It could be, but I really, for me, it's kind of ninety ten. It's all in her head, like, and and I think kind of that's more that's the more interesting take. And is it so me. we love watching her relationship with the woman as like she gets to know her and then she kind of starts falling a bit in love with the woman and wanting to save her and then the woman's like, I have a life, I've got a party, I have friends, like. Like she doesn't need Maud as much as Maud thinks she needs her, and like exactly. And it but gets that's really why interesting. What, that's what's interesting is that you know you get very little of Amanda because yeah. she she and She's I wasn't I wasn't expecting that either. I thought we were going to be spending a lot of time Same. with these two women, but as soon as she gets fired, it's like Amanda's out of the picture and until that's the bit that final where we were like, huh? moment. That was and it's like Amanda's kind of just like the manic pixie dream patient. Like she's <laughs> putting good. her. She's like Amanda needs saving. It's a savior complex, yeah, isn't it? Exactly. She, she wants to, and I want to convert her. That's what's so interesting about this character of Maud. She's the, she's a 
she's the one she describes Amanda at one point as being lost to her face in the party she says yeah. no I think you're lost but she's the one who's lost and we and never she's... find out what something awful happened to her a year ago and I, I love, love that they don't even I know they give you kind of you've got, you've got enough of the pieces to clue together that it was like something bad I think she I think she was um Administering CPR and like caved the, the woman's chest in is what I think. I don't know because there was a lot of blood and it was interesting because at the very beginning they showed us a brief scene and then it cut to the film and I was like, oh, they're starting at the end of the film boring. I know, but I actually, thought the same. But, but actually it wasn't. It's, it's so much, I'm and glad like, they didn't do did that. Did she imagine it or not? So I love, and then she bumps into the like very kind I think that was real. I think that was, that's the, that beginning of the film, that moment that you're referring to is the traumatic event that sets everything in motion but then for the, this character the nice woman from her hospital the colleague who's like trying to look out for her says like you know I think I, I could tell that things were getting worse from you and I knew there was a problem for sure, you yeah. so it seems like she was kind of unravelling before all this and then we get but I, few, we find I, out I, that she was out, I think she was out partying a lot exactly like, I think that's that's like this film is about um, direction and purpose right because mm-hmm. that's what um, I think it's beautifully done in the way that we get a voiceover narrative which can be very um cliched but it's it's, it's her very prayers. like are you there god it's me yeah Margaret. it's it's her praying to god and i love that and it's her addressing but her praying is like i have menstruation cramps and i've taken two ibuprofen <laughs> yeah it's very detailed <laughs> i mean like god's got god's very busy maud don't be giving him all the, like just bullet points please yeah. but um um what, what were we saying so, so yeah so she's somebody who's absolutely um been lost the 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 thing is the, there's a motif running through this whole thing of sinkholes did you yeah, notice that I so noticed. so it's like the water going round and round in a drain she sees the same in her pint glass like it's almost like this this um this gateway to hell it's people spiraling downwards that's what was happening oh, to I her oh i kind of saw it more was like um the heavens opening for her to dive into no i saw it as the opposite so the, it only happens at the end it's reversed the yeah, same thing the is seen in the clouds and that's her ascending to heaven she's finally found so well, but she, it's the opposite so she it's, this, it's this menacing thing this this spiral going downwards um and that's what's happened to maud she's she's somebody who's looking for purpose that's what she's um, addressing to God the whole time like what do I need to do uh, give me some direction I don't know what the signs are and that's all that and, and that's all that no more all you need to do is put needles in your shoes oh burn stop your hands. that was awful that was disgusting when she was but, unpicking the wound on her hand I didn't even I was like Dave tell me when it's finished but like, I think that's disgusting. what that's the theme of this movie is is um, is it's no coincidence that the other character in the movie is at the end of her life and there's a very um pointed scene where she says I think I can't think stop thinking about who the moment who's going to be there when I die what's next and all these things and and that these are the things in, in that at that stage you'd be thinking what is the purpose of all this and and that's why um organ like religion and faith is so attractive because it provides purpose and that's what Maud has clung to but she's somebody who has She's just gone over, gone overboard well, she's it, overdosing it, on on people faith have done that throughout time like that self-flagellation thing like that that hurting yourself to appease a god or whatever yeah she's but she's also punishing herself as well right really there's, a, there's a form of punishment and in that it scene and when reward. she goes out and gets drunk and is like with men and like trying to talk to people that was a very disturbing scene as well like yeah it was it was you could see her unraveling and like i just really enjoyed like the study of maude as a person and like the little bed that she lived in it was like so grubby oh, and then she has like this cleaning montage when she's like refound her faith again and like but that's the thing about about faith can can have restorative powers and actually be really good for somebody because as well. she thinks that she was levitated and maybe yeah. she was that's what i it's like it could have happened we don't know but then when she goes in when she goes back I really, to the house I really don't think any of it happened I think we're and, and I think the final sorry I'll come back to you the final shot of the movie is when amazing. is when um, when the facade slips and we see the reality yeah that, that for me is the tell that, that was amazing that she this, sees whole, everyone everything prior to that was in her head she sees everyone on the beach in, like in rapture like bowing down to her angelic wings in her ascension to heaven and they see someone burning to death and that was incredible ending to the film like and then the title credits just come up yeah. but when she went back to Amanda's house and she went back into the house and then she went into the bedroom and I think that they set it up quite well because earlier on when she was having sex with that guy 
she thought that she killed him but she she thought that blood was coming out of his chest and then it wasn't right no but sorry that's why I think so when she, she she killed that patient with CPR no no I know I get that was, no but yeah. I'm saying they set up that she's having hallucinations now because they showed us that happening and then it wasn't happening him. oh sure so then it shows us the patient Amanda being uh, like a devil kind of exorcist thing to her but we know that didn't happen and then she kills Amanda and then she just leaves and that was like I just thought that was really cool I loved how they did all of but that but it's so confident to never go back to that and show the reality like we don't see we don't the movie doesn't ever give you the confirmation that you desire like yeah, oh wait cool. no it's her. she wasn't possessed she, yeah. she just murdered that woman it just gives you enough but it, it's like she's just, you just murdered you someone. just know it you just know it in your core that this is not you, this is lit, it, it's a fantasy it's a it's an escapist fantasy to give herself purpose but she's also like sick like she's she's unwell like oh yeah and like we get some sort of sense that like sorry guys so we're like this is we're like trying to get away from people on the footpath while we do this um podcasting where you walk around us in a, in a pandemic can be difficult um but yeah i just think go single file people <laughs> if you're traveling in groups please yeah people don't go single file it's weird like, like we, we just immediately cross the road we drop to single file and other people just keep walking abreast anyway uh yeah so awesome freaking love it I love that I left some stuff unanswered but like mildly like we get where she's going it's not too ambiguous and I love the audacity of the whole thing I just love the confidence of it all I thought the woman who played Maud was awesome yeah Morford Clark amazing really enjoyed her performance and yeah I mean there's not much else to say it's awesome totally recommend best 80 minutes I've had in ages yeah it's I feel like invigorated by this thing it was like uh, it's like being shaken and I um, think it would have been I would have liked to see it in the cinema that's for sure because I think it would have been a cool like kind of one of those shared experiences like I think I find horrors to be best enjoyed in the cinema that's for sure yeah because you, you're sharing the gasps and yeah. the and the the, the 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 horrified silences yeah. I'll never forget um, what was that film last year I went to uh, see it with Alex the uh, follow up to Hereditary your man uh, anyway the, the follow up to The Shining no the follow up to Hereditary the uh, it, students go to Sweden god guys everyone's screaming the name of the movie to me anyway can't remember um, uh, anyway th- that was a moment where I was like that, that's the last horror, horror film I think I saw in the cinema and it was just like exactly as you're describing this sort of communal um, shock yeah. That you can feel the shock in the room, and the, the, and there was like silence as the, as the credits came up, and you're this just all is, there sitting there. There was less jump scares trying in this. to take it in. This is what I was worried about in this movie that there was jump scares. Sorry, Mid-sum- but there's no Mid-sum- jump scares Mid-sum- in this. Basically, so that's good. It's just grubby when she's lifting the wound off her hand. But we gotta go. Oh, stop! The wo- I, can't, I couldn't <laughs> handle all the gore. Yeah, 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 yeah. The gore is gross. Yeah. But we gotta go. Uh, we're keeping the short and sweet. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Let us know what you thought of Saint Maud. Did you catch it last year, or are you just catching it now, like us on rental? And um, contact us at the Cinemile on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or the Cinemile at gmail.com. And we would love, really love, if you enjoy listening to the podcast, if you would head over to whatever app you listen to us in and leave us a rating and a review and subscribe. We would hugely appreciate it because that's how other people find our podcast and how we get like recommended um, to other people. So we appreciate it loads. Thanks, guys. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. You must be the loneliest girl I've ever seen. I'm here, Amanda. I am not alone. And neither are you. No. Snap out of it, honey. He isn't real. You must know that. No, you felt him too, remember? We both did. No, honey. I didn't. ACAST powers the world's best podcasts. Here's a show that we recommend. 
Hey, I'm Kim Holderness. And I'm Ben Holderness. We host the Holderness Family Podcast every Tuesday. You may know us from the silly videos that we make online. Or a book about marriage called Everybody Fights. Or as winners of season 33 of The Amazing Race. Still can't believe that happened. Listen, we do a lot of stuff, but our podcast is our most favorite thing. Yeah, because every week we get to sit down face to face, talk to each other about marriage, family, mental health, or just anything that we want to know more about. Sometimes we have expert interviews, sometimes it's just us, but our goal is to bring some joy and laughter into your life every week. Our other goal is that maybe you will learn something as well. Right. So search the Holderness Family Podcast and check out our most recent episodes. We have one about staying organized with creators of the Home Edit. And one about being diagnosed with ADHD as an adult. We hope you'll join us. Acast helps creators launch, grow, and monetize their podcasts everywhere. Acast.com. <laughs> 